evening. Today is Tuesday, July 25th. The time is 6.31 p.m. And I'd like to call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order. May I have a roll call, please? Delory. Here. Mata. Here. Onken. Here. Stegel. Here. James. Chase. Thank you. We still have a quorum. So minutes. Item number three, minutes. Item 3A. Planning and Zoning Commission meeting minutes for the regularly scheduled meeting on June 27, 2023. We require a motion and a second to approve the minutes. I have a motion. Yes. I move that we uh, approve the minutes as published. Okay. A second. I second that. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion by Vice Chair DeLore and a second by Commissioner Mata. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries four to zero. Moving along, item number four, citizen comments. Item 4A, citizen comment period. The Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes members of, welcomes comments from citizens early in the agenda of regular meetings. Speakers are provided with an opportunity to speak during this time on any agenda item or any other matters concerning city business, and they must observe the three minute limit. So at this time, I'll open citizen comments. Okay, so seeing none, I will go ahead and close citizen comments. Thank you. Item number five, consider impossible action. Item 5A, Greg Gardens, final plat sub-22-0269, 47.07 acres, 210 residential lots, three right-of-way dedication, 11 open spaces lots, three drainage easement slash open space lots, three commercial lots, one public utility easement, one alley lot, and one joint use access easement located at the corner of Veterans Drive and Greg Drive. The staff proposal is to recommend approval with conditions outlined in the staff memo. Jason, do we have a presentation for this item? Okay. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, let me start here. So this is a, uh, a replot, or I'm sorry, a final plot. Um, we were actually going to put this onto the, uh, um, sorry, let me get rid of some of my screens here so I can see. Uh, we were actually going to put this on consent, but we had a couple modifications or conditions that we wanted to go over with you, uh, fairly minor in nature. Uh, but this is a, a final plot of the Greg Garden subdivision. It's approximately 40 acres. Uh, it is was rezoned uh, to a planned unit development district. Um, this PUD zoning allows multiple base zoning districts, so you'll see R1A lots, R13, and R1T. As long as, as well as retail services and open space. So, this is going to allow a mix of housing types and, and some commercial uses in the project. Um, roughly, right now, there's residential lots of 209. Um, one of the uh, documents stated 210, um, but one of those residential lots is actually just a, a easement lot itself. So, that's why you may see some discrepancies in the numbers. There are three uh, retail services lots and then a total of 14 drainage and open space lots uh, kind of scattered throughout the, the project. Um, so here's an overview of these sections. Uh, so if you look, Veterans Drive is on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, and then you have uh, Mistletoe and, and some of the others, uh, Chaparral Drive. Um, so you'll see here this is a large commercial lot uh, on each side of the proposed street to the north. And then some more residential, you'll see the different lot sizes in here uh, to offer those different products. And then with another commercial site along Dreg Greg Drive and FM 150. Um, this is just a detail set of that lower area so you can kind of get some more information on what's being proposed in that area. Uh, for water, there is an existing water main. It runs through the east portion of the site along Rebel Drive and then south of the site along Gregg Road. Uh, there are internal water lines that are going to be constructed as part of the development that will connect to our mains to serve the property. Uh, sewers, an existing uh, wastewater line that runs through the south end of the property along Gregg Road, um, which was proposed to connect the internal wastewater collection system. So all those lines will be new and installed. Mm -hmm. 
And then the downstream section of this existing line is currently six inch in diameter through Gag Park. It will be replaced with an eight inch line. Uh, those will be constructed as part of these improvements uh, with the subdivision. Uh, transportation, so you'll notice there's several streets that are being dedicated uh, with their right-of-ways to serve the site and provide access to all the residential lots. That's approximately 10 acres in total right-of-way being dedicated. Major uh, main access is going to come off of entrances on Greg and FM 150, um, but there are also connections to existing home uh, Kyle subdivision to the west. Uh, that's primarily for fire access and interconnectivity. Uh, the, current, the applicant is currently working with the city and TxDOT. They are going to need to construct a proposed roundabout at the FM 150 entrance. Uh, because of the way this intersection is skewed, it may take a little while to get that, that roundabout constructed. So um, as part of that, uh, they do have their secondary access through hometown Kyle, so that will be a, an opportunity for, to meet fire code, and they'll have their two entrances off the property, so no issues there. Um, but we did want to uh, put two conditions on the plat uh, for final approval that you can add to your motion. Uh, one is on the last page or page four or five on the proposed plat, um, you'll see a land use uh, schedule chart. Um, again, some of the numbers there are different because of some discrepancies that you see in the, the plat. Um, one of those being the uh, residential lot that I mentioned that's actually a, a utility easement. Um, because of its size. And then on page two and three, there's one lot to the west side. I don't think you'll be able to see it in the detail on the, on the projection. Um, but on one page, they have it labeled open space and drainage easement. On the detailed sheet that provides a little more information, they only have it labeled as open space. So we just want them to clarify um, what indeed is it going to be both or just one and then update that table. So uh, pretty minor changes, but we wanted y'all to be aware and make sure that y'all included those in your uh, motion. So this time I'll be glad to answer any questions y'all may have. Uh, Mr. Lutz, uh, I'm not quite sure how it works with the PUD. With the normal subdivision, um, the developers have to install a park with a unit this size or provide parkland dedication fee and park development fee. What has the developer done? I believe this at this time, uh, some of their, their open spaces are gonna be allowed for, for parkland. That's why they're open space lot. Um, and so they will be handling those internally. And that's why there's several throughout the subdivision, some park at parks and then some, some larger ones. So in the current plat, the final plat, it just marks open space. Yes. How do we know what's going to be developed there? Uh, they generally have a, um, they'll go to the parks and have review their park plan for acceptance. Um, I do not have the background information on that one, what was done with the PUD. Um, my review was purely on the subdivision ordinance, so I, I oh. can't answer that. Kayla, do you know the answer to that question? Um, I can, we can look that up for you and bring it back next time if you have some major concerns, but it wouldn't affect the, the plat itself at this point. But at some point, we're going to have overall approval of the PUD. Yeah. The PUD, the has been approved. Um, so this, that is all set in motion. This is the kind of the next step to get plat and construction. Yeah. I, I just wondered how we get involved with what that parkland is going to look like. We've got... I mean, there is quite a bit of open space dedicated in this, but I'm quite interested in if it's going to be just an open grassy field or drainage ditches or else, you know, some decent park space for the residents. I'll have to look into that. This I'm not sure when this PUD was done, but this was done prior. It may have gone done prior to y'all coming on board. That's why y'all haven't seen that. But this this is a an existing PUD. Yes, sir. It's not a very exciting answer. Um, so the, the park improvements. Excuse me, sir. State your name for the record. Oh, sorry, please. Chris Rawls, BGE. Uh, we're the civil engineers. Uh, the park improvements for this one are really just trails. Um, it's a small enough site. That there's not really big amenities that can be placed, um, but it won't be drainage ditches either. So we have actually on the screen kind of the area where you have the big open space. There's a pond there but all of that sort of inter, kind of interweaving open space between townhomes and the single family, uh, that'll have trails. And then I actually need to go back and, because it's been a while since we first submitted, I believe the park development fee is gonna have to be paid. So there's a land dedication 
but as far as park development fees, that will ultimately be paid, and so the city would install any facilities that they would, you know, deem appropriate. I'm sorry, didn't quite catch that. So you're going to so pay a, park land there's development. There's a $750 park land fee and a $750 development. Development fee, fee correct. The land fee we're dedicating in lieu. I need to go back and check, but I believe the development fee is just going to be paid, so that any improvements beyond the basic trails that the money is in place and the city ultimately determines what actually gets put there. Does that okay. make sense? Yep, yep, thank you. Thanks for clarifying. Mm -hmm. So if I understand correctly, that's part of the original PUD application and it was previously approved, this, the, the park structure and park land. So the um, park land fee and the park land dedication is part of our normal uh, development process. We usually don't waive those fees. Um, and they're not dedicating any public park land in this request, so they're paying the fees, which will go towards, um, you know, future improvements to city parks, future land acquisition for parks, things like that. Right, I understand that part. The part I don't understand is I haven't seen a, a plan for the, the development that the, the gentleman stated, so the trail system and, and so forth. Is that, a, is that an actual plan, or it's just a notional uh, uh, intent or there's no there's no so because the fees are getting paid there is no actual plan associated with it okay it's just a straight swap uh, the trails themselves are more notional but again that'll ultimately be determined by the city okay Hi. well I, I'd like to say that uh, in the future for PUDs I would like to see the any kind of open space as put in there as, as part of a development plan to see say what's actually going in there. We have a say in a PUD, and I think that should be part of our say. So. Okay. We'll make a note of that. Um, I know there's a couple of ways we do PUDs in the past. We're trying to standardize those. Um, generally, those those PUDs, if they are dedicating parkland, that kind of goes through the Parks and Recs board. Um, they review the parkland dedication. If they're going to be doing amenities that are open to the public, that that kind of feeds in there. So Parks does review those as part of their programming. Uh, any plat that comes through, they sign off and make their comments. Okay. Um, but if it's definitely a PUD, then we'll make sure that our future applicants are including that and discuss that so that you guys yeah. can cover that here at PNC. Right. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Stiegel, you can have the floor. Yeah. Thank you. Um, regarding the uh, Noah's uh, Alley, Noah Street Alley, um, it's 20 feet wide. Where is the outlet for that? Um, that comes, that connects actually to Noah's Street at the end of the cul-de-sac, if you follow it, or to the south on Greg Drive. So it does have two connections there at that point. Is it planned that trash collection be done from the alley? Um, I'm not aware on the trash collection, but generally those come to the front. So these, these sites are unique that that these are these smaller lots their only frontage is from that alley um, that's why it's actually named um, so I'm, I'm not sure about the history or how that came about on the discussion but um, they would roll their dumpsters so it, in, at this point it is called an alley but it is also their functions as their street frontage on this plat 20 feet yes This is not like the perfect answer. And when I talked to Leon Barba about it, uh, his belief or understanding was that they would collect garbage from that alleyway. And we actually, uh, some of the radii he requested get expanded a little bit based on those garbage trucks. Some of the feedback he's gotten on uh, corners they're having trouble turning, so. Right, because if you know, garbage trucks and how they operate, he'd have to do a turnaround at some point to get both sides. To get, to get both sides. He would have to do a turnaround at that circle or? Right, he'd have to come and turn around in the cul-de-sac there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then uh, also regarding fire and emergency, there's the uh, other uh, route out of the subdivision would be through Beargrass and Greg. Uh, so there's the route that you see here on the east side. Am I allowed? Can I? There we go. So, um, Three, there's actually three, not including the alley. Up on the northeast side, um, the route that goes through those two commercial lots, that's the primary access. That's um, 
in this, I, I think the backup maybe is just some old information. There's no longer a roundabout proposed because the residents in Silverado uh, to the northeast of this site do not want one very adamantly. Um, and TxDOT decided to basically nix that. So what the developer instead is doing is um, some additional turn lanes along FM 150 and then extending those turn lanes through the Silverado intersection, which is just off page northeast here. Um, by extending those turn lanes, that allows TxDOT to install a signal at some point in the near future. And so that kind of handles this weird offset intersection. Um, so anyway, primary entrance is this one you see on the northeast. There's another one on the southeast accessing onto Greg Drive across from the park. Um, there's obviously the, the alley, but that's really just for those townhomes. And then there's the one on Beargrass there. So the thought I had was Greg Drive opposite the park. Um, during athletic events, that street is jammed with parking. It is a sometimes nightmare during uh, after school and before school. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a difficult go at that particular um, location, frankly. Um, I just hope everybody is aware of the problems that will likely create. Um, and um, one further question is uh, regarding those 22-foot lots. Um, what's the plan for those small lots? Uh, those are attached townhomes. Attached townhomes, okay. Thank you. Okay. So for this item, we need a motion and a second to approve the final plat with conditions. Do we have a motion? I make a motion. Yes. Approve the uh, plat as uh, shown with the conditions. The conditions. Okay. Second. So we have a motion by Vice Chair DeLore and a second by Commissioner Stiegel. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mm, okay. Um, if there's no discussion on that, the question is whether to approve item 5A with the conditions outlined in the staff memo, specifically updating the land use chart on page four and five with the correct lot amounts and correcting the discrepancy regarding easement types for lot 14 block E. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Okay, next up item 5B. Consider a request to construct an approximately 7,050 square foot retail shell building located at 20090 Marketplace Avenue, conditional use permit CUP-23-0083. Kayla, do we have a presentation for this item? Yes, Kayla Sharp, city planner for the record. So this is located at uh, 20090 Marketplace Avenue. Um, it is just, I guess that would be south of um, the corner of 1626 and Marketplace. Um, this will be a retail shell building of about 7,000 square feet. Um, you'll notice in the staff memo this is not in the I-35 overlay, but there is a development agreement for this overall project um, that requires this conditional use permit for your review. So if this will to the next page, one second, maybe, okay, um, so here, it's lagging, okay, so there's some uh, renderings of what the building will look like, very similar to the ones that you already see um, on site, there's two that are already built and two more under construction, this will be very similar to that, uh, building materials are primarily um, stucco, uh, brick veneer, and then uh, fiber cement, product that kind of has a wood look to it. Um, and per the development agreement, these are all perfectly acceptable building materials. There's really no um, regulations for this portion of um, the development, what materials have to be used. So this is in compliance with the development agreement and we recommend approval. I'll also go to the dumpster enclosure is also in compliance. And then landscape sheet, this is still in review, um, but it will be approved by um, staff. So this is just kind of for your reference, to kind of get an overall picture for the site. 
Thank you, Ms. Sharp. Uh, are there any questions for staff? I have a, uh, one question. What um, does the back of that building face? It will face, maybe okay. going to the map would be a better idea. There will be, and I don't know if y'all can really see my cursor on there, there will be another uh, retail building of some sort behind this, and then this um, over here that's kind of under construction, there's kind of a little green space that'll be there. The concern, as has been expressed before on the dice, um, is what the back of a building faces is mm -hmm. the obvious question. Um, meaning, what do the citizens of Kyle have to look at when they're sitting in another restaurant or doing something that they're looking at the fairly uh, utilitarian space? I mean, it doesn't have to be elaborately uh, decorated, but uh, other than bringing that brick veneer around, I don't see any accents that are um, very attractive or distracting. Um, so that's a concern I would have about many of these developments is, uh, you know, the failure to, to bring around accents other than that veneer. I know we don't have real uh, authority on that because it's outsized the 1,000 foot. But uh, in any case, I just thought I would state that uh, concern. I have a question for you. Um, so on the landscape plan, I noticed that they have some large shade trees. I love large shade trees. Um, the mature sizes of those trees are pretty substantial and they're quite close to the building and to each other. Um, has the city staff got any concerns about that that they're gonna look at during the review or are they planning to approve it as is? So this is still in review. Um, I think we had comments back um, early July, so we're waiting on the next um, round for submittal. This is something that we will look into for sure. Um, these uh, trees that are planned are pretty similar to the rest on uh, the other, I guess, almost five sites um, that are under construction or already built for this development. And based on some fairly preliminary research, they should be fairly non-invasive species that, um, and they're planted far enough apart that it really shouldn't be an issue with them being too close together, too close to the building, things like that. So, but ultimately it will be um, approved by staff once it's fully in compliance. And Jason might have more to add on that. If you have some concerns, we will look at that. Um, but generally, when you're planting new, the trees are very adaptive. Um, so it's not like you're building this building over some existing trees. Uh, the good thing about the cedar elms is they have a very shallow root system. They'll actually go down versus out. Um, you can actually plant those within six feet of each other um, or to a foundation. You generally won't have any problems. Obviously, the, their biggest issue will be as it is growing and that canopy starts spreading out. That building, I believe, is almost 20 feet tall. Um, so there may be some conflict with the building there um, as it matures. Uh, but generally, when you plant these trees uh, at a young enough species, they, they generally will learn to grow together versus kind of crowding each other out. Um, if you plant two larger trees next to each other, those roots can't suffocate each other. They'll fight and kill off. Uh, but when you get them young the way they're doing here, it, it generally is not an issue. Um, I think the red bud might be the biggest concern. We'll have to pay attention to their placement because they have, they have very basic root systems. So they do go out, they don't go down. So that'll be something we look at. Um, but generally, if they're going to place those uh, at some of the locations, if it's not near the building, um, it'll be a maintenance issue for them if it messes with their pavement or parking or something like that. But we don't see any, any major issues with our infrastructure currently. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Nope. Okay. So we need a motion and a second to approve this conditional use permit. Make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Mata and a second by Vice Chair DeLore. The motion is to approve item 5B. Is there any discussion on this motion before we vote? Yes, Commissioner Stiegel. 
Oh, never mind. His finger was just going for the vote. Um, nope. My only qualm is is those trees. I know that the preliminary um, preliminary thoughts is that we'll we'll all be good, but I think the rule of thumb that I've always heard was the the root system needs about as much width as the the canopy of the tree will have, and some of these trees have. Um, canopies that could be 30 to 100 feet wide and um, the root system might not affect pavement and stuff but they might affect other trees or kind of stunt the growth of the trees so that they can't really thrive and be mature and um, given that we have 14 trees as required which is great um, I don't want to see half the trees on this property or these series of properties come down in the next 20, 30 years because they can't thrive or to see a bunch of sad, scraggly trees who haven't been cut down. So um, I, I just want us to make sure that that gets a good look over, but um, that's my only only qualm, so. Okay, well, so now the question is whether to approve item 5B. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries four to zero. Item number six, general discussion. Item 6A, discussion only regarding the Planning and Zoning Commission request for future agenda items. Does the commission have any items to be requested? Yes, uh, Chairperson, I have one particular item. Staff, we had previously made a list of items to consider for future agenda. The first one of which was uh, minimum lot size. And, um, uh, you heard my concern about what was going into those 22-foot lots, and I'm glad to have heard what I heard. However, our neighboring lumbering municipality to the north of us is uh, proposing th three uh, residences per 2,500 square foot lot. And um, I'm hoping that we can have a discussion about what a minimum would be, um, seeing as... Um, I don't know what impact that model will have on anybody else's thinking, but it's uh, something that I don't find very agreeable. Um, probably average house size right now in Kyle's plot maybe 1,800 square feet. And to think that you could put two houses in that space of any size for any purpose to me is just, uh, it's unimaginable and outrageous. But uh, I'd like to see that on the agenda is the point and see if we can uh, have a discussion with staff and and uh, break that one out and uh, um, you know come to some uh, kind of conclusion or recommendation for the uh, council. Um, and I guess for clarification, um, to put that on the agenda, are you wanting staff to, to come back with full-blown kind of research and says, hey, if we do this, we're gonna have these effects on the subdivision ordinance, these effects on our utilities, these effects on on uh, zoning, dense, I mean, do you want us to look at big picture like we're gonna go through a code update? Because if that's the case, it, it'll probably take us some time. Um, I know we had discussed this at a prior meeting and we kind of talked about we would focus on the MXD uh, zoning district first. Um, so we're trying to actively engage uh, a developer in town that may work with us to provide you guys some examples. Um, just because, but right now our caseload that, that's kind of hard for us to do and, and don't dedicate a lot of time to that. So um, if it is just kind of you want to have that discussion and get y'all's thoughts, then we can probably put that on a future agenda item fairly quickly. Um, but if, if you do want to know more nuts, bolts, ifs and whats, then, then we'll need a little bit more time to bring that back. Okay. So that we, we really get a realm of, of what, what the responsibilities are here and what the considerations are. Yeah, we can at least uh, come forward with a list of things that will be affected. Um, most notably is our water wastewater system. Um, our system was not modeled for that type of density, I can tell you that. Um, so if we're going to look at moving to those minimum lot sizes where ultimately we're doubling our density in certain areas, um, you know, I, I won't have any answers on what that'll do to our wastewater system because we run those models as things go and those are kind of expensive models to run. Um, but we can at least have the conversation on, you know, uh, 
is this what you want? Is this the look you're going for? And then if it is, then we can say, okay, now we're going to have to discuss traffic, uh, intersections, TIAs, wastewater, water supply itself. Um, we do have some water coming in with ARWA. Um, so we'll, we'll, we can bring you all a list. And so if you want to kind of just keep it high level, um, I think we can do that probably next couple of meetings. Um, if you're wanting some kind of analysis or proposed regs, that'll take us a little bit longer, so. The word is density. So, um, you know, they're, they're obviously quite impactful and uh, one follows the other. So if we could have a conversation about that, okay. it would be good information to have perhaps for the commission, but also it tells us uh, what would be required to go more in depth. Um, it's a serious step, like you said, it goes off into code pretty quickly after you consider things. So obviously we want to know what we're doing. Okay, we'll add that to um, our list and move that up on our priorities. Anybody else? Okay, I do just want to make a quick notice to people in the commission that that is now going to be a linked item in the agenda for the future agenda items. So when you raise it, you should see it there in the future and you can always consult that and check and see if um, something that you do want to raise is already listed there. So that'll be there for your reference in the future. Okay, um, moving on, item number seven, staff report. Item 7A, staff report. Does staff have a report to the commission? I do have a little PowerPoint to kind of go over these, so let me get that started. Uh, so the big report is give you an update on the landscaping ordinance. If you recall, um, probably about a month ago, y'all approved some proposed amendments. Uh, the goal of those amendments were allow uh, a little bit more artificial turf and a little bit more zero scaping to be allowed on developments. And this was uh, with the goal to conserve water. Um, Y'all ultimately approved those amendments. Y'all made several recommendations. Um, the two most noteworthy on there was uh, add some language uh, describing maintenance, um, color, fading uh, of, of any artificial turf. The second was um, you did not recommend to remove the natural uh, vegetative screening um, as an allowable screening. And then the third was that uh, the recommendation was actually to uh, not allow uh, artificial turf in the required landscape areas. If you rem remember, the original presentation was 10%. We kind of wanted to start small. Um, so what council did was they approved everything with uh, with staff recommendations or with PNZ recommendations, um, including the allow the existing vegetation to be used as screening. Uh, but one, one change they did was uh, they did want to increase the amount of artificial landscaping that could be utilized in, in the required landscape areas. So uh, staff was proposing 10, they went to 50. Um, and then again, there's no limit on other areas if they want to go above and beyond what's required landscaping. Um, there's no limit if they want to use artificial turf in other areas. So kind of keep that in mind, it was broken down what's required and then above and beyond. Um, Staff's also working on future changes to this ordinance. Um, we're gonna pro be proposing some changes uh, regarding trees, um, mitigation, oak wilt prevention, um, and requirements for uh, uh, permits. Uh, we have a lot of utility contractors that are working in right-of-ways. Um, some of them are ours, some of them are uh, fiber guys. Um, we have some, had some instances where some trees were trimmed without a permit and we were concerned about damage. So um, that's going to be something we're going to bring back to you hopefully next couple of meetings. Um, and then we're going to also have some mitigation. Um, we already allow mitigation. The state kind of preempts, um, says you have to allow two inch calipers, things like that. Um, so we are going to have some middle uh, mitigation fees for single family. Um, there's sometimes you just can't mitigate on site. 
um, the site's either built to the point where it can't handle the trees that you're supposed to plant. Um, and then if you want to cut one down, um, the, and we have a, a fee for that, there will be a cap because obviously um, we're not talking about developers with, with deep pockets that can, can kind of pay fees. You know, this is, we're, we're talking single family. So um, those are some of the things that we're looking at, at changing. Um, and we're going to also modify our specimen and tree type. Um, so instead of just having one standard size that every tree, tree is treated as a specimen or heritage, that it's, it's based on, on tree type. So, uh, you know, uh, an eight inch live oak is very different than an eight inch crepe myrtle. So we want to make sure that we kind of consider those differently. So, so those are some of the changes you'll be seeing on that ordinance. Um, we're also working on the downtown master plan. Um, that's uh, something that's been kind of going concurrent with uh, the comp plan. Um, so right now we're working on updating that document. We've done some open houses, gotten council, citizen, and city manager feedback. So we're looking at implementing that into the document. Um, the document's going to be trimmed down. Um, we're going to look at this and make it more action focused um, with with action plans. Uh, it's going to focus on aesthetics and concepts, and then actually defining the downtown area. Because I think that's the biggest question for most people: is what is that area going to be? Um, we are hoping to draft a finalized uh, a draft to be presented to you around the same time as a comp plan, because they are kind of going hand in hand. So we want to make sure that those two documents are at least considering each other and working together uh, versus working against each other. And then. Um, we are, speaking of that draft document, we are hoping to have one provided at the end of this month. Um, and that was after their trip number four, where they provided some public input and had that opportunity. Uh, trip five is in October. We are working at determining and finalizing those dates uh, for adoption. Um, so tentatively, October timeframe for adoption, uh, depending on how things shake out, it, it could push back, but we'll, uh, we'll, that's what we're shooting for is that October adoption. And that's all I have on a staff report. If y'all have any questions on that information, I'd be glad to answer them. Hey, Jess, I had uh, one question on the mitigation, uh, uh, <clears throat> I guess, w with trees. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that, you know, s some sites are just, you know, we can't do it on site. Is it possible, you know, say the developer has to do a mitigation fee and like, hey, we have to pay X amount of dollars, so, you know, there's, maybe 10 trees that were cut down. Instead of doing on-site, is there a possibility uh, to have the developer plant the trees, save residents one have, hey, you know, I'd like a, if it was in a neighborhood, we, we're gonna, we can, the, uh, a neighbor wants, or a person living there, I'd like to have one of those trees on-site where it's a mitigation, kind of like a mitigation site where they um. plant it on their yard or. Yeah, I follow what you're saying. So we do allow on offsite mitigation currently. Um, generally, they have to work with parks department, and so we provide those places, okay. uh, parks. Uh, I don't think we've contemplated allowing them to kind of approach their neighbors for mitigation. Um, that's an interesting idea. We'll definitely probably look into that. I've got all kinds of thoughts running in my head about that, you know, good and bad. So. Um, uh, we'll explore that as part of our okay. discussions and bring that back. But but currently, yes, if if they can't do it on site, they can they can work with us and we can plant those okay. at any of our parks. Right, because I mean, yeah, I guess if they're required to keep up with it, you know, it's I mean, yeah, it's well, it's somebody's property. And, no, I don't want you coming on my yard, but you know, plant the tree, but you know, never come back type thing. No, right now, <laughs> I think the mitigation is actually going to focus on um, the single landowner that that maybe they they don't want to mess with with coordinating with okay. a, a tree company and coordinating with the city and getting that planted in a certain spot, they kind of want to pay their fee. Um, right now there's no cap on those fees. And so the, we kind of want to, again, we're talking single family, right. you know, not everybody has unlimited resources and funds. And so uh, we've seen other cities do this uh, and we don't know what that number cap will be, but that'll be something we'll bring back to y'all okay, and, and yeah. probably see guidance on. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thanks. I, I had a question just about the downtown area. The end of one line was defining the area. So do you, as I was following that, I, I was thinking conceptually defining it, but do you also mean the physical boundaries of the uh, downtown? Yes, yes, we would have to define that um, via map. Um, say, hey, it's 
starting on this road to this road? Is it, does it go all the way to veterans? Does it stop? I mean, that, those are the discussions we've been having uh, ongoing. I've only been here six months, and I know those questions have been going ongoing for a while. So right. um, ultimately, that's that's a big kind of elephant in the room is, is it going to be just the original core or are we going to start to expand that out? So um, that'll be something we'll finalize and bring back to you. Yeah, what's interesting to me is that while we're wanting to find downtown, um, interestingly and, and hopefully you see that all the businesses that are going down Center Street in the old homes, we got everything from bookkeepers, lawyers, real estate, haircutters, whatever may be the case. And so uh, that, that's the best adaptation, I think, is when people really buy in and, and at that level. But uh, um, we'll just have to, to see, see if we can create something attractive enough where we bring that kind of attention, you know? Yeah, no, the, the, the area we have downtown, some of these old homes, those are, are ripe for adaptive reuse. Um, you know, they don't always need to be single family um, structures. But that's kind of why we needed that public feedback to kind of see what, what the community really wanted. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Okay, item number eight, adjournment. I'm gonna do this a little bit differently than Alex, so let me know if uh, this is not allowed. I say as we've completed all the items on the meeting's agenda, there's no further business that can be discussed we're adjourned without a, a motion. Is that okay? Yep. Cool. Bye. No, just kidding. Thank you. Done.